Hi guys, it's Kath here. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make this pendant. Um, I had loads and loads of comments in Katie's Paula McClay Friends Facebook group. And I've had a couple of private messages about how I did it and stuff. So I thought um, I'd just do a quick tutorial and show you how I did it because it's really, really simple. Right, what you're going to need is some clay. I've conditioned it. I'm using a uh, Primo Sculpey in black. Uh, a dye, uh, a dye. A cookie cutter, cutter, whatever shape you want to use. Uh, some Perfect Pearls. Uh, mica powders. I uh, don't know what colour I'm going to use yet, but I've got a few here. Uh, Perfect Pearls doesn't need um, coating uh, because once it's got a binder in it, so once it's baked onto the clay, it um, it sets and doesn't come off, which is really good. Uh, I have tried it with normal mica and it doesn't work. The mica does wipe off. Um, so you can only do this technique with perfect pearls or you'll need to put some sort of coating on top um, which can be a bit awkward because of the um, the recess that's made with the uh, stencil. Uh, so yeah, clay, perfect pearls, something to shape your pendant on. Um, I use these egg poachers. They're absolutely rubbish for poaching eggs, but really good for getting a nice curve on a, a pendant. Uh, you're going to need some stencils. Uh, I've got loads of these Tim Holtz ones because I just love some of the funky patterns he does. And rather than the rose one, I thought I'd use this one today, which is code number 107. Uh, Tim Holt, Stampers Anonymous, um, you'll be able to find it online dead easy if you want to use this one. Uh, and then you just need a fluffy brush for dusting off. You don't need one, you could use a bit of tissue, it just stops your clay getting marked. Uh, some findings to um, string your necklace up with. I've got some of this lovely rubber cord that I like and a little magnetic clasp which I just uh, glue on. Uh, did simple findings there and a little bit of um, Sculpey Bacon Bond or whatever it is you tend to use just f so that you can stick your um, bale on the back. Uh, we're going to part bake it, put the bale on the back, turn it over fully cook it and then the bale's nice and strong. Right, let's get started. Um, I've only got a small piece of clay here because it's going to get covered in mica. Um, I don't like being wasteful. So I've got just enough really for my um, cutter and I am actually just going to snip some of these extra pieces off because I don't like waste and I don't want to mix mica clay in with my plain clay so uh, my scrap pile is getting ever bigger so I try and be unwasteful where I can. Right, stencil. I'm going to use this stencil and basically I'm just going to pop it over gently press it so that it starts to stick then take my little acrylic roller and gently roll over it and you'll be able to see that it because these um, mylar stencils uh, just have a bit of thickness on them it kind of pops up makes it uh, embossed or debossed or whichever the phrase is. I'm just making sure I've got all my edges covered because I did take it a bit tight. And then we're going to put some Perfect Pearls on. 
um, I've got a, this one's called, oh, it's called Perfect Pearl, this one. Uh, and that's kind of a frosty white. And then this is the Heirloom Gold. Uh, and this is Pewter. So I think I'm going to do a bit of an ombre with these three colours. Uh, and I've got just a little finger dabber. I'll just make sure I haven't got any of another colour on it. And um, you're just basically going to pick a bit up on your dabber or whatever. You know, you could use your finger. Um, it's just, I tend to get covered in it. So I'm uh, using my little dabber. Dabber. Tomato, tomato, however you pronounce it. And I'm putting a pretty decent amount on and just making sure it's pretty well covered. I'm just going to tap, oops, oh, that's not making the camera shake. Tap the excess off and then go into this white pearl colour. Oh, pretty. It's quite silvery. And I'm not worried about it blending yet. I'm just going to get my stripes down. Make sure I've got plenty on. I'm not forcing it in. I don't want to leave the pattern of the sponge in my clay. But I am being quite firm. And then I'm just going to go into this pewter colour. Get plenty on. I think that's nicely covered. You can kind of, when you tilt your head from side to side, you can kind of see um, if you've missed any little bits and I'm just going to dab into that white a teensy bit to start it blending then I'm going to take the white and do the same the other way just to give it a bit of a blend and I'm go just going to go into my gold the same way with the white there's Gold's quite a strong colour, I think, so. And I think that'll do. Now, just wherever I've put my fluffy brush, there you are. Let's move these out of the way. Fatal, because I normally end up knocking them over. I'm just going to take my fluffy brush and just brush the excess off and make sure they've blended nicely because it just make it out there I hope that you can just see where I've blended them and this kind of burnishes it in as well if you're just gentle this is just um, a watercolour mop brush I'm gonna peel my stencil off and reveal our pattern stencils over there and just for the minute I'm gonna scoop this up and just wipe away all this excess mica then I don't make a mess there it is and then I'm just gonna get my cutter line it up nicely, cut and these little nobbles on the cutters, I've realised if you just twist your cut around a little bit it kind of gets rid of that nobble so you don't have to go back in and trim it. Let's put that to one side, <sighs> bit of fluff on that, bring in my trusty egg poacher Blade wipe. Pick this up. Pop it 
on and then very carefully just start encouraging it just don't want to get and it might get fingerprints on it just gently encourage it to be honest once it warms up it does kind of flop to that shape but I just like to stick it down so that I know it's not going to have a wonky hem if that makes sense a wonky hem edge there we go I think that'll do And that's now ready to pop in the oven. So once it's uh, baked, well, part baked, I'm going to stick it in for about 15, 20 minutes just to harden it off. And then we'll come back and we'll put the bale on. So I'll see you shortly. Hey guys, we're back. It's out the oven, cooled down, nice and bonny. So we're going to now uh, put the bale on the back. But just before we do that, I just want to show you. Um, I've dipped this into uh, cold water. I do that with most of the things that come out in the oven because I just want them to cool and set quickly. I'm just going to get a bit of paper towel. And as you can see, there's nothing. It is totally bonded um, and just to, you know, little experiment, I made this one, uh, be just before I made this one, I did a test with this one just to see how it would stand up to stuff. And you can see I've tried scratching it with my nail there and there and I've just literally and I'll do it again. Grab my perf. This is just my everyday perfume. Uh, what I'm just going to show you is even if by accident you catch this with a bit of perfume. You know, you've got it on, you're nipping out, you put a bit of perfume on. Oh, there's a little... A little tiny bit's come off. I can just see it there. To be fair, that could actually, because it looks black, that could be the clay. So, um, yeah, it's pretty, you know, it'll stand up to most things, I think. It's not going to come off. I, mean, I wouldn't get in the shower in it or anything, but I think without a surface treatment, it'd stand up to, um, you know, everyday wear. Um, so I'm quite happy not to to coat it and for those of you that haven't got any of these perfect pearls I also did this um, it's just normal uh, mica and I've, oh, and I've put a thin coat of um, UV resin over it I'm not sure if you're going to pick that up on the camera but you can still see the lovely shimmer of the mica and this is a two-tone one so it's like pink and blue um, so you don't actually lose any of your mica goodness if you like um, so if you don't have uh, any perfect pearls or you want to protect um, your pendants uh, a bit of resin uh, doesn't change how the, uh, how the mica works Right, back to this little beauty. Uh, not too sure which way I want it. I think that way. So what I've noticed the the white one on black is almost the same colour as the pewter one. Uh, maybe it looks a bit different on white, but once it's baked off, it's almost the same colour as the pewter, but still looks lovely. Uh, I think 
I'm going to put my bale here. Uh, so I've just got a bit of clay, um, zero on my pasta machine, which is the thickest setting. And I've got my little cutter. I'm just going to cut myself a rectangle out. And I'm just going to make it a little bit thinner. And plus it'll get rid of that horrible knobbly bit. Um, I don't know if you remember in group, I posted a picture of this uh, acrylic rod I bought. Didn't read the, si uh, the sizes. So I paid a pound for this little baby, which I expected to come this size. But what I have realised is it's absolutely brilliant for making the curve on my bales. So I can just do that and it doesn't collapse while I just squish these little edges down. And then I can use it to pick it up without losing the C curve. In fact, I'm going to stick it to it a second. I'm just going to put a little bit of my uh, bacon bond on. It's not bacon bomb this, it's bake bowl, whatever it is. Um, I think I'm, I'm having so many brain farts today, it is ridiculous. Pop a little bit of that on just to help it. And then pop that on there. I'm just going to give it a little press, make sure I've got enough room for my findings and I'll just find a little pokey tool. Um, obviously I'm trying to be pretty quick because I don't want this to be an ages long video. Um, but you know you can refine this a lot better and if it's just for wearing yourself it doesn't really matter what the back looks like, um, but if you're selling them to make, uh, you know, you could take a little bit more time with your finishing. Uh, like I say, I've just kind of been as quick as I can, being mindful of how long the video is. Right, so we've got the bale on. Uh, I'm going to pop this now back in the oven. Uh, I've just done 15 minutes, so I'll probably do half an hour. Um, just to make sure everything's nicely bonded and properly baked and um, I'll see you when this is finished. Hi guys, I'm back. We're all dry, uh, baked, dry, cool, whatever. Nice and bonny. I've just given it a little buff with uh, paper towel and then we're just uh, going to pop our rub a card on and there we go lovely little necklace really simple really quick um, and I mean you could turn hundreds of these out really couldn't you uh, especially if you're making to sell them uh, offer gifts for Christmas and things really easy um, and I'll just show you, um, because I'm aware that a lot of people might be from the States. This is, I'll just wind it up. This is the rubber cord I use. This is the 3 mil. Um, if you just search for rubber jewellery cord, this will be what you come up with. I got this off AliExpress and I do believe... It was about six pounds and it was free delivery for me in the UK. Um, and you get, I think there might be 10 meters on that. And these are my little uh, clasps. Uh, there's a little hole in, three mil hole. I'll just pop a little bit of super glue in, stick the cord end in. Uh, nice and bonny and they've got a little twist I think you'll be able to make that out there's a little twist on it before it comes out when you put it back in 
it just turns to make it more stable but it's really strong magnet anyway um so yeah it's um, you know as as cheap as putting um a piece of cord with a lobster clasp or whatever these are um hypoallergenic as well um so you know i you don't have to worry about anybody having an allergy against the metal in it but yeah that's it guys hope you liked it uh i've really enjoyed doing this video actually it's been a long time since i've done some youtube videos i used to do it two a week at one time because uh, i used to work for quite a big craft company in the uk uh, and design products for them so obviously i had to make samples and stuff uh, but yeah so I might make a few more. Let's see how this one goes down with you guys. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. Like I say, it was really quick, really simple. Take your time. I've obviously rushed. Um, you know, I could have finished that bale off a bit better. But to be fair, I'll probably just be wearing this and nobody's going to see the back, are they? Um, so, yeah. Uh, any questions or anything? Leave me a comment and uh let's play nice people nobody wants snarky comments in their uh on the youtube videos and i'll uh hopefully see you again bye